go first again. Oh. Okay, and we're good to go first. Chase, hard fought win. How do you sum that one up? Yeah, I mean, credit to the Hawks. They just, you know, played on a game a couple nights ago, travel yesterday, tough one again, and then um, they just come out and claw and scrap and fight and make it difficult on you. You know, they junk it up, try to slow the game down with their little three-quarter court pressure, and we obviously did a terrible job on in a number of areas tonight. But, um, yeah, credit to the Hawks for making it a, a tough, tough contest. You say terrible in a number of, number of areas. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I thought we were uh, poor cleaning up the rebounds, giving them second chance opportunities or just stagnating opportunities to go run. We were really bad taking care of the basketball. We made a bunch of poor passes. We were just slow and sticky with the ball all night long. It never moved well, um, which prevented us from getting good looks at the rim. We didn't share it enough, kick it out for threes enough. It was just, yeah, pretty bad offensively pretty, for the most of the night. What was the message at halftime on Tyler Hart? Yeah, uh, for maybe a little bit on Harvey, and then he still manages to find a way to hit big shots late. Um, we, you know, for the last five or six games, going back to finals and a couple before last year, we've tried to have a, a game plan on Harvey and how we wanted to guard him and, and really want to take away his left and try to cut him off going that way to the left hand and, you know, more stay attached and blow him up going to his right hand. and. Um, he'd hit some shots, and so we just said, let's just stay attached to him. And even then, we still lost him a few times for some shots. What's the toughest part about resetting when you won five in a row, all the blowouts coming with a 49 point win, and coming up against a team you're expected to beat again? How hard was it? What's the message to the guys knowing that there's expectation and it's not a 49 point game at all? Yeah, they're not going to all be 49 point games. Um, again, it, that's a huge testament to how the Hawks have been playing, how competitive they are right now. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, we got to be better. Whether it's eking one out, and you know they they don't really they all count the same at the end of the day. But you know, from my point of view, I think from our point of view, there's a lot of things tonight we'll we'll need to clean up before we go to Perth on Friday. Is that a positive you can take when you have been blowing teams out that you can win other ways and to win a close one like this, like in the playoffs? Most of the games are in the timeline. If it's you hitting your free throws in the clutch and coming up with stops at the end. Yeah, I mean, sure, I just, you know, my coaches are trying to tell me the same thing, but I'm not taking a bunch of pride in, in beating a team that's missing two imports and has got 21 losses on the year. I think we just need to be better. A couple of shots at the end of the first quarter and the end of the second quarter, hit threes, kind of pretty telling in the end. Just having hit one at the end of the first quarter, yeah. um, have you been practicing those clutch moments? Because at the time, it doesn't seem like much, but it was the difference in the end. Yeah. I mean, just, just knocking down the open, easy shots, you know, strong corner, kick out three, you know, it's not a not a tough shot to miss. So, I mean, just getting on the rim, it just creates so many more opportunities. You know, yeah. This is one of Zay's kind of least impactful games. Um, what do you think they did to sort of hold his end of the game? Yeah, I mean, it's one of I don't want to discredit all war on this one, but I think Zay got his own way a lot tonight. Um, he's so good. I just. For whatever reason, he seemed to second guess himself a lot. I don't know if he was just trying to create or pass. I thought tonight would have been a great matchup for him to go for 30, and he just didn't seem to have that aggression in him tonight. You guys have seemed to find your way in transition without turning the ball over too much, especially the last few games. What, I guess that they had their press, but was there anything different tonight that, that you kind of that was in front of you that made you guys kind of be a bit loose with the ball? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, again, I thought their pressure kind of bothered us just uh, after makes, especially. We had to, to really get slowed down. Um, I'll have to go back and watch. There were a few times early when we ran and we got good looks or layups, and it just didn't see, Again, we were just the, the final pass, the final moment, we were too slow with the ball. It wasn't quite the Christmas of passes needed. And we just, you know, there's like plays early where we're pulling up for long twos and we're making passes and it's like to the wrong spacing and just nothing was ever as fluid as it has been for the last five or six games tonight. Are you treating any of this with any level of concern or are you treating this game like an anomaly? Sort of thing? I think it's probably a week where we're happy to get away with two wins and, and we'll go focus on Perth, you know, next game up. Chas, could you talk us through um, the crowds you've been playing in front of the last few weeks? It's been outstanding. What's it like to play in front of the crowd? Yeah, um, you know, I thought it was terrific tonight. Um, 
They were the the kids were, were were great. You could hear their energy, feel them, especially in the last few minutes. They uh, they obviously were into it. Um, it was it was fun. You could see early in the game the lower upper bowl was had a good amount of people in it. And it obviously sets a tone for a good environment. Um, guys like JG making some shots and then make some big plays late. Obviously got the the crowd going too. Do you think part of it is that effect of the Christmas day game and how much vibe there was around that much hype? It's sort of like lingering on into these last few games. Do you think there's a correlation? I think the Christmas day game played into. I think the way we've been playing played into it. Um, you know, being top of the table, Sydney's a winner's town. Like, if you if you got it right, I think they, they want to come support quality teams. So, um, yeah, we just got to keep building, hopefully keep giving the fans, you know, again, I <laughs> I was laughing with Luke and some of the owners and after the game, and they're like, oh, man, the fans love that one. I was like, man, it was not a – it was a close game, but it, from my point of view, it was not a pretty basketball game for either side necessarily. And um, But he's like, they don't know that. So <laughs> they just had fun because it's close. Matty McQuaid. Yeah, Chase, just a couple from me, just to, to follow up on that crowd um, tonight, that you said a, you seem to be doing this a lot lately, another franchise record. That's the first time in the history of this franchise you've had four straight home crowds of 11,000 plus. It was nearly 13,000 tonight. Just wanted to ask you, what does that mean to you to have been a part of that? And also, you know, what does it mean to the club as a whole to know that you know, you've really got a large portion of the Sydney basketball public really starting to get behind you no for sure and I think there was a, a top of the table cricket class at the SCG tonight so to have 13,000 here fans coming out is, is great um, I think the quality of basketball that these guys have put on for not only this year but over the last couple of years now I think fans recognize it's a it's a fun style to come watch and support I, you know we dunk it more than anybody in the league by probably by double I would be my guess um, and I, I know they love the dunks, especially when it's Zave. So I think, yeah, it's it's a fun product. I think the guys do a great job of fan engagement to, to keep people in, in, interested and intrigued and, and make lifelong fans. I think that's a huge part of it. And, yeah, I think winning winning helps. And just finally, you mentioned Perth next up. Obviously, the last time you played them here, it was um, you pretty much dominated and something John really talked about in his post-game presser at the time was that he felt like his team wasn't prepared for the pace at which you play. Obviously, you'd be expecting him to make adjustments, but from your perspective, there's going to be a sellout there. The Red Army is, is a crazy environment, as you as you know. You've got a new group that hasn't really experienced that yet. What adjustments did you feel you have to make to, to go in there and get a W? I don't know. A lot of our group was there when we went and kicked their ass last year, so I think we'll be ready. Oh, it was that, yeah. <laughs> three, import, three new imports, but yeah. We'll be all right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Matty. Thanks, Matty. Thanks, guys.